If you don't know what the completionist badge is about, please watch my video series on it from the beginning, or else you might get confused. Even though the first parts have less quality and I kept mispronouncing the words badge, they're a must watch for newcomers. Sound, don't you already have True Completionist? Yeah, around a month after the release of True Completionist, the badge names got changed. Completionists got phased out and became Original Completionist, True Completionist took its place, and the Ultra Completionist, which I was going to make a video about, became True Completionist. But in exchange we received 4 new Completionist badges. Dark Completionist and Dark True Completionist for completing all the games of the hub on a new account, Ultimate Completionist for going an extra mile past True Completionist, and Final Completionist for getting all the previous Completionist badges. Let's get back to the video. At the end of December, a new instance to the Completionist series was added. The True Completionist requires twice as much time as the other badges of this series, and it requires you to collect badges outside of the hub by other players. To get it, you need to collect all 9 pure Emeralds badges, with each one of them giving you a hardcore challenge. This is one of the hardest badges ever, and if you thought that the previous badges of this series were hard, this one takes twice as much time. Besides that, Completionist has received some changes to make it more fair compared to Shard, and some games have yet again received new content. Let's start with a few Emerald badges. Green Cyber In the extra part of Journey to Completionist, I was talking about a secret ending for Green Cyber. To activate it, you need to do a really difficult wrap near the three math equations and touch a button. Don't worry, even good obby players struggle with this jump, so it will take you around 5 to 10 tries. Continue the main path until the giant red button, and after touching it, a new platform should activate on the left. This path is really hard, because it has kick blocks scattered everywhere, and there's even a trap at the end. After touching the button, return to the main path and go to the original ending. A path to the secret ending should appear behind the original one. The button kicks you and tells you to rejoin the game. This is supposed to happen. Rejoin, and now you can see that at the first checkpoint, new platforms have been activated on the right side, which contain really hard jumps and blue neon wraps. If you complete that, congratulations, you have a first pure emerald badge. And you probably have no eyes left after that amount of neon. The Forbidden Jumps This badge requires you to have completion. Why the hell did Skipco generate to get these badges? I feel like man is trying to make completionists more painful with every update. Most of the badges are unanchored, so dropping them off the blocks shouldn't be that hard, but there's this one badge that's stuck between the block and the base plate, and it's extremely hard to get since you need to either touch it with emotes or go sideways until you get the badge. Or you can leg jump, but I have no idea how to do that. I managed to get the badge with a reflex emote, but it's event exclusive, so choose your own way to get this. This badge requires you to have completionist Okay, these are just free badges from the hub, added for no reason. This badge requires you to have completionist. <sighs> the first badge requires you to win the Galaxy Tower 5 times. This game is a collaboration where Mana was a part of it. Honestly, I have no idea why they didn't use the JTO kit since Mana used it a couple of times in previous games like Nonsense or Puzzles. The tower itself is mediocre compared to other hobbies, and it really reminds me of these casual tower games that have comically large floors and tons of checkpoints. The most infuriating parts for me were these jump pads, elevators, no idea what to call them. Because they are server-sided, they lag a bit when stepped on, and some parts become barely possible to use without having zero collision. Oh, and you are unable to move mid-air while you are being boosted. The first half of this tower is basically a walking simulator, while the second half spikes in difficulty, has janky gameplay and tons of thin platforms. If you guessed that the second part was made by Mana, you were correct. To speedrun this game, I recommend grinding coins by falling from the latter checkpoints onto the coin spawn spots, and it's recommended to do that before your first win. Get the fusion coil for 1400 coins since it boosts your speed and gravity, and with the help of it you can skip some parts of the tower. Just try not to skip stages, because you get kicked if you do that. There's also a secret badge that doesn't have any hints on how to get it. At the final stage, when you drop off a conveyor, turn right and land on the island. 
touch the hidden neon cube and get teleported to another island. Navigate to this barely visible path, touch another teleporter and do a small orbit to get a badge. Instead of getting this secret or just getting the 10th stage badge, Mana chose a badge that requires 5 wins. Even though he admitted himself that the game is cringe, he still decided to torture us with this crap. How evil. The second game is a sequel to puzzles, which contains even more janky gameplay. The first puzzle requires you to grab the ledge to push the block to the right, and then go into the wall to push the block out. The second puzzle is a janky pushing platform where even a slight tap can send this whole thing into hyperspeed. Despite that, I enjoyed the game even though it was short. Now, what badge was I talking about? The forbidden jumps require you to have completionists since you need to fall all the way down at the test. One of the walls has a hole in it, go through and do a reverse jump to touch a teleport. The orbit itself is very tedious to complete, it has difficult jumps and the fall will result in starting over. Nearing the end, there's a 15 star jump and a 3 by 2 stick out after that. You can skip these jumps by doing a long walk, but this path wasn't there in the old version, so I did it legit. For the long jump, I used this strat. Grab the edge of a block, turn your camera a bit to the side with shift lock or first person mode, turn the camera in third person mode, and then go forwards and jump at the same time. This will take a lot of tries, trust me. Thank god, both of the hardest jumps have a safety net. Otherwise, it would be much harder to do. Do not panic at the last part, you get a checkpoint here. The random badge. Behind the completionist tree, there's a teleport that takes you to a grid with all of the badges that Mana has created on all of his accounts. One of these blades has a pure emerald badge, and it spawns in a random spot. Basically, you have to walk quite a lot to get this, but I was extremely lucky to get a badge to spawn in the first row. This place is really laggy, even the best devices get 40 frames per second due to the amount of parts and images. In a recent update, an option to disable decals was added, which turns this place from a lag test into a simple walking simulator. The long wait. You have to wait 100,000 seconds in the hub in order to get this badge. That's equal to around 28 hours of time. On every rejoin, you lose 1.35% of your time, and the penalty will not occur if you already have a badge. Like in the previous parts, I found time simply by leaving my PC on with an auto clicker when I went to sleep. Previously, you had to AFK for 200,000 seconds in order to get the badge. And in order to balance this nerf, Mana updated the painful badge walk so that you have to do it legitimately for completionists now. Also, in the recent update, activities for time were added where you can get time as rewards. If you complete all of them, you can get up to 6000 seconds of time. While that isn't much, they're a nice addition to this boring task. Wall of Doom is a rather simple staged hobby. It's rather old, so I can understand why the gameplay is not that good. It has some difficult jumps here and there, but most part of it feels like a walking simulator. Parachute Parkour is another obby which utilizes the classic gear that could be found in many old games. The obby itself consists of three stages, and you are required to hold the parachute the whole time, otherwise you can't jump and the platforms deactivate. While the obstacles themselves aren't that bad, the parachute's physics are janky. Like, really janky. Despite that, it's really enjoyable. I also really like how there's a practice area for this niche activity. And for Deep Darkness, I really didn't want to complete this. Judging by how you're stuck on the pillars above the Huntables area, you're supposed to just walk around, but I was too lazy to complete this. Seems like there's more activities to come, so we just have to wait for next updates. You can refer to this guide for time activities, and you will also need the Like a Bird's badge for Pure Emerald 7. The Extreme Chance Every second you have a chance of 1 in 10 billion divided by your time that you get this badge. Keep in mind that this chance roll occurs quite frequently, and you should be able to get this badge along with a previous pure emerald. If you are really unlucky, there's a pity system where you are automatically given the badge as soon as you reach 250,000 seconds. I don't have anything much to say about these two badges, as they both require you to just AFK. This badge has received a nerf too, as before the update it had double rarity and there was no PT system. Value Takeover For this badge, you have to collect 120,000 valuable badges on the Global Badge Leaderboard. 
Badges are counted as valuable if they were either created before the free patch updates on February 24, 2022, these are also known as legacy badges, or if they were bought with Robux after creating 5 free badges in a day. The check for the second condition is rather strange and involves checking time zones. If you have collected every badge on your journey to completionist, then you should have at least 45,000 valuable badges. The biggest question is, where do you start grinding? There are several ways to search for badges. If you have a Temple Monkey script, which can be found on the badge collecting servers, you can use my watchlist with 6,000 games and more than 180,000 valuable badges. This script is a must-have for players doing this challenge if you're on PC, as besides adding a new page for tracking games, it automatically hides collected badges, counts their amount in the game, expands the page itself instead of you having to spam click the show more button, and it can show valuable badges in the game. The extension adds a page to the settings called Badge Watch. You can import the watch list by inserting the whole list inside the text box, and don't forget to tick this box so the plugin counts only valuable badges. After leaving it for a while to count the games, you can save the page as an HTML file instead of recounting each time when you open the watchlist. Global Badge Leaderboard has a search function which looks for badges and games for you to collect. By default, it's set to search for legacy welcome badges, although you can configure it to other types of games. There's even a skip system implemented, where the finder goes over badges that require a certain amount of time spent, meets badges, or badges that are simply unobtainable. Keep in mind that this system is not perfect and relies on keywords in the name and description, so there can be some false positives. Mana and Elmo made a Google spreadsheet with 1100 games, containing a total of 115,000 legacy badges. The games from there are already included in my watchlist, but if you can't install the plugin, this works too. Also, you can scout other players' favorite games lists for badges. I recommend checking out Glarius' profile, since his list has only legacy games, but that's not effective as other methods, due to some games not having badges or being private. And most of the games are already on the watchlist anyway. This is easily one of the hardest pure Emeralds badges, due to the amount of time it takes to earn everything. Previously, it required 115,000 legacy badges, but after the introduction of valuable badges, the update to Manus Badge Walk with 10,000 valuable badges and the late enough of the requirements, it has become a bit easier to grind out the games. Sure, the legacy badge pool may be running out because of people closing the games, or Roblox making some of the badges impossible due to changes in scripts, valuable badges can easily be created in order to retain the balance. Speaking of Manus Badge Walk, it has received an overhaul yet again. Of most noticeable changes, the server size has been reduced to 1 in order to prevent rate limits, and Sky has been merged with Cave into the collision. Oh, and also Mad Scientist has been replaced back with Gur, but he's still here, hiding under a block. Also, new rulers and areas have been added. Right before the update, you could buy a ruler or a badge of yourself at a lower price than a valuable badge's cost. It's because Mana was already planning to add 10,000 valuable badges in one update. The game passage just helped him gain back part of the Robux spent. I got a ruler of myself too. It's located under the house inside the maze. I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but my ruler got placed in the same area that I recorded for the past 3 video, so that's a pretty cool reference. Anyway, good luck to people attempting pure Emerald 6 without any prior experience with badge collecting. You're in here for a while. Badge Master. You have to get 400,000 total badges, complete all activities and get the Like a Bird badge, which have been covered previously, complete the Christmas 2021 event in Heart Orbi and get to extreme difficulty in Girl event for his token, and get Eerie and Gatekeeper in Halloween Badge Reef. For the total badge requirements, chains are your best friends, because more than half of the required amounts can be earned through them. Nowadays, you can complete this requirement in one single chain. For example, Project Meteorite has around 300,000 badges, although it's a bit broken because of Roblox's stupid moderation system, and Ultimate Badge Chain has more than 1 million badges. Previously, you had to AFK for a bit to get access there, but since the access place is down, the chain has become free for everyone. Since I've covered the time activities, let's get straight to the required badges. The Christmas 2021 event to Hearts Orbi is not actually that difficult, it's just the gameplay that's a bit janky. It's pretty enjoyable though, and I still have the exclusive item that was given back when the event was active. The Mighty Girls token though is a pretty dumb badge. 
In the Go event, you have to get to the extreme difficulty on the main obby. But here's the catch, you cannot trade time for skips, so you're pretty much stuck with the free skips that you receive at the start of the obby. At the extreme difficulty, a giant statue of Go will tell you which stage you have to complete in order to get his token. Before we get to the next patch, let's talk about Batch Reef in general, since it's the newest game in the hub. Halloween Batch Reef is a mega collab, with Takodai being the host and Mana was one of the main scripters. Essentially, it's a simulator where you have to collect blood droplets and kill ghosts to get blood, and you can spend this in shops to upgrade multipliers or your weapon. This game has a lot of badges and secrets, but only a small part of them are required for completionist. Let's cover them first. The first three required badges are very straightforward. You have to obtain 100 octillion blood, stay in the game for 15,000 seconds and complete 100 quests. For the Inri Glow badge, you have to find the red torch on the map and complete an invisible obby on top of it. For Lord Keeper's Insignia, you have to get to the top of a shop and answer 20 questions related to the game's lore. Yeah, this game has its own lore too, but it's not connected to the original lore in any way and it's considered as non-canon. You can watch this guy by mana for all the answers. For the ultimate badge, you have to do a really strange series of tasks. It's essentially a secret hidden behind the secret. Make sure you have bought enough quest upgrades to have enough speed for the obby and the final parts. You can watch this guide made by Mana himself. And now for the Eerie and Gatekeeper badge. This badge is locked behind four phases, with each of them presented to you a pretty brutal challenge. You will have to beat the bosses, complete the puzzles, dodge the bullets. Oh, and did I mention that the game also has a... <laughs> The game has somehow incorporated Pomni from the Amazing Digital Circus into its lore. I have no idea how did that happen. I'm sorry, I can read the script. <laughs> the guide for this patch can be found in the same video as the guide for the ultimate. And it's pretty hard, so good luck to the people who try this. Also, this game has its own version of a completionist patch. The Nightmare Completionist and the True Nightmare Completionist. Even though they consider it as non-canon, they're a nice challenge for people who want to explore this game a little bit further. Chat's puzzle. In the hub you have to find 4 randomly generated symbols in 4 random locations and make a combination out of them. None of those symbols repeat in the codes. Here's a list of the possible locations. On a pillar in Huntable area. On a wall in Huntable area. Near Complexuality's true completionist statue. Outside info booth on left wall. Between 50,000th badge and 60,000th badge in history area, behind 3 badge update memorial, on glass behind completionist tree, on the left side of first completionist shards badge walk, on the lava at the end of the first completionist shards badge walk, between the game's challenge and near voices, below the bridge to bonus games, behind the bonus games area, behind the left support of the big badge walk, on the right side of the big badge walk around 23rd badge, under the Huntable Bridge, on left side of the since last batch created sign inside info booth, at the corner in front of the first true completionist batch walk, above the list song collection slash technical batch hunt in the completionist tree, on the left grey conveyor in front of badges and numbers too, and behind the portal to the big batch walk. This is a full list of where symbols may appear, but no manner there may be more locations added. If you brute force the combination correctly, you will be teleported to the second part. And here begins possibly the most confusing part that I've ever explained here. The room has a pixelated version of Gur along with a cryptic sign above it. Some of the letters of the sign are uppercase, treat them as binary where an uppercase letter is 1 and a lowercase letter is 0. Every color has its own binary value. There's also a message encoded in base64 nearby. You have to take the amount of pixels of every color on the pixel art and then multiply each amount by its binary value of the color. Add the resulting values together and then multiply it by the final value of the color behind the board. Then save a number together with a decoded base64 message in the chat and you will get the batch. Before the ARG was added, the batch was really easy, you just had to save a decoded base64 message in the chat. Now the batch has at least some difficulty added to it. I won't be able to help you much, sorry, good luck on that. The final stretch. Well, here goes the most annoying part of the whole journey. This section contains spoilers, so feel free to stop here if you want to do the batch legit. After you finish every other pure emerald batch, the teleport in the hub here should become red instead of black. 
When I was completing this on stream, I referred to the guide that TDS fan made. Huge thanks to him, since the whole section is cancerous and it has the worst gameplay possible. The final stretch begins with long jumps on thin blocks, with a speed boost on top of that. If you fall anywhere in the stretch, you have to start from this annoying part again. You have to complete three challenges in order to unlock the ladder to the patch. The red trial has blocks hidden in non collidable parts you have to parkour on. And after that, you have to enable click to move because the next part contains an invisible path, which is filled with wraparounds and jumps over pits. This is easily the hardest challenge out of all three, and it relies more on memory than skills. The pillar at the end works like a button, when you touch it, you unlock a part of the final truss. Oh, and by the way, write down this number located at the end of a hidden block spot, you will need it for the blue trial. The green trial is a rather difficult obby, and honestly, mana still has not improved to make your hard gameplay since hard obby. Although, to be honest, I'm better at that kind of stuff than at whatever obstacles modern towers have. There's another number hidden under this block, you will also need it for later. By the way, the numbers are randomly generated, so don't copy them from me. The blue challenge contains math questions, along with some trivia. The first question is very simple, just multiply your profile ID by Manus ID and then take the first 8 digits. It's written in a weird way because it's binary. For the second question, take the green number and the other side refers to the text behind you. Pretty simple. The third question is the same for everyone. In the legacy batch list, Manus batch walk is the first, Reginald's 10,000 batch walk is the second, and Buff Story's batch walk is the third. You have to take the ID of a third game, add the ID of a second name, and subtract the first game's ID. The answer is this number. This letter leads to a victory and triumph. Eva Mana is here to congratulate you on getting this badge. Now, the only remaining thing left here is the completionist test. Давай, рейд лимит, пожалуйста, не подведи меня. Чё там оно проверяет? Погоди. Наконец-то, спустя два месяца! ГГ! ГГ! Просто могу сказать ГГ! Два месяца я фармил эту херовину. Господи, где у меня там сцена, где вебка находится? Да, здрасте. Собственно, вот. Вот и весь стрим. А там, там изначально где-то четверть бутылки оставалось, собственно. Ну, я, конечно, ее приберег не для этого случая, но как бы отпраздновать надо, все. So, my journey to completionists has finally come to an end. True completionist was originally created as a joke in Manus Badgewalk Discord server. It was called Ultra Completionist and Mana wanted it to require 500 hours and 100,000 rejoins in Mana's Badgewalk to obtain it. Later, at the end of November 2022, Mana revisited the idea of a badge and made a text file with ridiculous requirements for Ultra Completionist, such as obtaining 200,000 legacy badges, collecting all badges in hunts like Find the Eggs and Find the Homics, along with many other tasks. The list of requirements became so long that it evolved into the Ultra Hard badge list. After some time, that idea got picked up by Shower Tail and he made the list into a Roblox game and later created a standalone site. But getting this badge doesn't mean that I have stopped collecting them altogether. My current goal is to get 3 million badges and 150,000 valuable badges. And no, I'm not going to stop after that milestone. I am the Eve True Completionist and currently there are more than 40 victors of this badge. Originally I wanted to create some sort of interview where I would ask players what country they are from. But eventually the victor amount became too big and some of the victors didn't want to share the country anyway. Despite that, I am the first victor in Russia and the CIS. 
and I think that's pretty cool. The first 100 victors of True Completionist can get a free UGC Limited, the True Completionist Trophy. Since the official Manus Badgework server has been archived, you can join these two servers instead. Badges of Robloxia is the biggest badge collecting server, but it covers them generally. You can ask for some help in there though. New True Completionist, on the other hand, tries to bring back the community that the Manus Badgework server had. And if you need any help with Manus games, this is the perfect place to go. I want to thank everyone in the Bash community and I want to thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned and see you next time.